what's going on everybody welcome back to another video and today we're going to be talking about some of the Winnipeg Jets prospects and the future of the Winnipeg Jets you know I've been talking about how good this team currently is here in the 23-24 season and you know they're going to be a playoff team they're going to be a contender I believe but we're going to step into the future take a look at some of their prospects and see how they could fit into this team going down the line. Kevin Chevoldeyev made a lot of trades in the last, you know, 12, 13 months to solidify this team that the Jets have right now. However, he did not have to give up any of his prospects. So the Jets have a very wide and talented prospect pool that has a very bright future in the NHL. I'm going to be talking about a lot of them. I'll give a few honorable mentions to a few at the end of the video as well. Uh, but right now we're going to start with their number one prospect, hands down, a guy that might even play for the Jets this season, Rucker McGrody. McGrody is Winnipeg's number one prospect out of the University of Michigan, currently in the NCAA. When his season ends, it is believed that he's going to be signing his ELC and be joining the Winnipeg Jets, so maybe he gets a couple of games and near the end of the year, but he's ripping it up with the U of M. He has 50 points in just 31 games this year, 16 goals, 34 points. The guy is a monster. Rucker was drafted 14th overall in the first round of the 2022 NHL entry draft, and he has been living up to that first round pedigree. Obviously, Obviously, you know, putting up a big year here in Michigan, but also at the World Juniors making his mark. Wasn't sure if he was going to be playing in the Juniors because he was hurt, and for, you know, the beginning of this year's tournament, he definitely was. But five goals, four assists for nine points in seven games played. He was the captain for Team USA, and he brought home a gold medal. Rucker is just an all-around incredible player. There was a lot of questions about his skating when he was first drafted. That has since, you know, gotten cleaned up. He looks really good. Just a guy that can drive the net. A big guy, you know, just big solid fire hydrant guy. He can go to the net, score some goals. He can make some plays too. And he's not bad defensively either. I think he's going to be a really good fit for, you know, how the Jets play. I think right now, you know, at the end of the season, he could be even a really good player. Just imagine him with Niederreiter and Lowry, right? If you were to substitute McGordy for Mason Appleton. Obviously, I don't think that's going to happen in the season but maybe we get a look at that you know at the end of the year uh but definitely expect rucker mcgordy to be a winnipeg jet full-time next season and i fully expect him to be a at least a top six winger for the jets going into the future he is that guy like he's their number one prospect i think that he's going to be a monster Moving on here, we're going to talk about the other first round pick from the Winnipeg Jets in the 2022 draft, 30th overall pick, Brad Lambert. This is a guy that I still can't believe is a Winnipeg Jet. You know, he fell down the draft rankings a little bit because he slumped. Uh, at one point, he was going to be like a top five pick, and uh, he was just struggling in Finland, fell all the way to the end of the first round, and the Jets scooped him up, and it has been an incredible draft pick for Winnipeg ever since. The Finnish skater is 20 years old, plays, you know, center right winger. He's been really good at center, and that's where he's been playing with the Manitoba Moose. Seems very comfortable in that position, and he's been lighting it up this year. 49 games played for 41 points. Definitely more of a playmaker, but he's shown this year that he can pot some goals too. So a little bit more confidence in his shot as of late. And uh, when Brad Lambert's playing with confidence, there's really no stopping him. He's one of the fastest, most electric skaters in the AHL, and he will be that kind of guy in the NHL as well. Uh, definitely think that he could be, you know, at the worst, maybe a third line spark player. I think that he's going to be a real good top six forward, maybe even a star. He's definitely got the skill set to do it. We'll see how, you know, his game translates to the NHL. He's done very good in the AHL, obviously being an AHL all-star this season. That's pretty cool for Brad. Um, he's just been all around really good this season and he's taken that next step. So we'll see if he's on the Jets next season. I don't really think so. I think he'll be in kind of a rucker McGrady situation uh, that McGrady's in now where, you know, he'll probably be playing at the end of the season next year for Winnipeg. And that's not to say I don't think he'll be NHL ready at the beginning of next season. I think that he definitely could be. However, I think the AHL would be good for Brad to be in for one more season just to round out his game a little bit more. And uh, I just don't really think there's a spot for him with how competitive and how deep Winnipeg's depth is. You know, it's going to be hard-pressed to find Rucker McGrady a spot as is. And uh, I just don't see the Jets rolling with two rookies in a year where they're trying to win a Stanley Cup next season, right? So that's just where my head's at on that. But Brad Lambert will be a very fun player in the NHL. Next up on the list, it's a defenseman, and that's going to be Elias Salomonsson. He's a Swedish defenseman drafted once again in the 2022 NHL Draft, 55th overall in the second round by Winnipeg. 
Solomon Monson's a guy that is definitely underrated and definitely overlooked just because of how, you know, much star power is in Winnipeg's prospect pool with, you know, the flashiness of Brad Lambert and Rucker McCrory. They steal the headlines. Not really talking about Salamonson. He is big, mean, but just very steady. Think of a, you know, very calm Toby Enstrom-esque defenseman, but just a little bit bigger and a little bit meaner. He is going to be very good in the NHL. I've been, you know, kind of just watching him a little bit. Go follow Avco Cup on Twitter and, uh, you know, he's a massive fan of him. He knows a lot more about him than I do, but great right-handed shot defenseman that Winnipeg could, you know, possibly need next season. He's only 19, but I don't think it's impossible to say that he won't be a Winnipeg Jet next season, especially with the uncertainty of, you know, Dylan DeMello and Brendan Dillon's contracts. See if Winnipeg can lock at least one of those guys up for next year. But 6'2", listed at 185, probably a little bit heavier than that. Mean player, very steady, very smart defenseman, great breakout pass guy. Kevin Chevaldeov said that, you know, after his season is over over there in Europe, they're going to, you know, work on bringing him in. I think that he'd probably just be a black ace. I can't imagine that he'd be playing over guys like Nate Schmidt or Logan Stanley if there was an emergency, but it'd be pretty cool to have him on the bench, you know, probably with Rucker McGroarty, honestly, and uh, have those two watch in the playoffs. But, uh, you know, it makes me think that, hey, maybe he does have an inside track of getting some games next year or at least getting a sniff. Already has his entry-level contract. I think Elias Salamonson is going to be a beast for Winnipeg and, you know, needing a right-hand shot defenseman, uh, hey, he might have a shot maybe even next season. Overall, though, what I've seen from him at 19 years old playing against pros already in Sweden, uh, there's no doubt in my mind that this guy is going to be an NHL defenseman and I can definitely see him being a complimentary, you know, top four, maybe even top two guy. We'll see. Next up, we're going to be talking about Rucker McGordy's best friend, Kobe Barlow, listed at 6'1", 194. This is a big dude at just 19 years old, just turned 19 in February. He is a goal-scoring machine, big, strong, goal-scoring machine. 45 games played, 34 goals in the OHL for the Owen Sound Attack this season for 52 points on the year. He is a beast. Kobe Barlow could be a X factor in the NHL. I think he's going to be one of those guys that's just a really solid second liner, but you know, number one power play upside, just goal fiend, power play merchant kind of player. I'm not really sure how high his ceiling truly is in terms of an all around player. I think that he's very raw still at 19, and that's to be expected. We'll have to see how he develops going forward in his career uh, definitely in the OHL I think that he'll probably get a shot with the moose next year and uh, we'll see how his game translates against pros uh, but I think he's gonna be very fun at the worst I think he's a middle six player and maybe he blows up maybe he becomes a first line player just undeniable 30 40 goal scorer in the NHL that'd be pretty cool it's gonna be a little while until we see him in the NHL though I think uh, probably two to three seasons as there's no spot for him right now he's not NHL ready definitely need, need some polishing and uh, needs to improve on a few different areas in terms of skating and defense but I think that Kobe is gonna be a very solid player in the league and uh, I can't wait till he's a Winnipeg Jet next guy we're gonna talk about here is goaltender drafted in the fifth round of the 2023 NHL NHL entry draft Thomas Millick who has been on a tear this year with the Manitoba Moose starting in the ECHL with the Norfolk Admirals working his way up to being the Moose's number one goaltender. Millick got some notoriety when he stole the starting job for Team Canada last season at the World Juniors playing six games dropping a 1.76 goals against average and a 9.32 save percentage to lead Canada to a gold medal. That was pretty cool. Jets took note of that and they took him there in the fifth round. He won goaltender of the year in the WHL for the Seattle Thunderbirds, played with Brad Lambert. He was a very impressive goaltender prospect, and the Jets have him now. He's only around six foot tall, maybe about 180 pounds. He's very slight, but he's very, you know, slender. He goes out there, very athletic, and he's just, you know, really solid on goal. Looks very calm. Uh, his stats for the Moose this season in 17 games played, he's got a 2.72 goals against average with a .905 save percentage. And that doesn't seem, you know, super impressive doesn't seem world changing or anything but in his last three games with the Manitoba Moose he has really started to turn it on and be one of the better goaltenders in the AHL last three games he's only allowed five goals saved 82 shots and has a 0.943 save percentage and in those three games picked up his first NHL shutout and a 6-0 win so very impressive for Thomas Millick he continues to grow as a prospect in the system again probably going to be a little bit till we see him as an NHLer but already 20 years old 
I think he's going to be a beast. Goaltenders are weird, however. You know, the guy could be playing lights out crazy in the AHL, and then he makes his NHL debut and plays in the league for a few years, and then he's gone, right? Like, it's very hard to tell, uh, you know, who's going to be successful. But there's something about Thomas Millick. You know, he's he's kind of succeeded at every single level. Why not the NHL, right? So I'll see him in a few years, I'm sure. Uh, but yeah, no, one of the more intriguing prospects in the system. Moving on to a couple of the honorable mentions in this video, we've got Chaz Lucius, currently 20 years old, will be, you know, 21 in May already. Uh, very talented center, but just has not been able to stay healthy. 18th overall pick in 2021 by Winnipeg. And the big thing on him is he is super clutch and super talented when he's playing games. However, he just has not played very many games. I mean, 17 games played with the Moose this season uh, before getting shut down for the year. Two goals, 11 assists for 13 points. Uh, you know, at 20 years old, that's very impressive to be doing that in the AHL, uh, but just unable to stay healthy. Shut down for the year, um, concussion issues, arm issues, leg issues, shoulder issues, everything has been happening to this guy. And uh, I'm just really worried about his, you know, overall health, not even his NHL potential at this point. He's scaring me a little bit. It's like a Nolan Patrick situation where he just had to walk away from the game because he was so hurt. And uh, I, I just wonder if that's kind of where we're looking at the Chaz Lucius trajectory. Uh, I hope we're not, but uh, you know, it has not been good for him the last few years. Just has not been able to play many hockey games. When he does play, he's fantastic. Uh, but unfortunately just has not been able to get many games in the last few years. So we'll see if that changes uh, going into the future. I hope so. I hope that he you know, regains his pedigree as one of Winnipeg's top prospects. But we'll have to see what happens going down the line. I hope that he's able to play hockey again. And the last honorable mention guy that I'm going to be talking about is Vili Hainala on the Manitoba Moose, the defenseman, 23 years old, and you got to feel bad for the guy because he won a spot to be with the Jets and then in the last preseason game got hurt, was out for 12 weeks, returned to the Manitoba Moose, and just wasn't able to get back up to speed in time. 24 games played this year for the Moose, 5 goals, 9 assists for 14 points. He's been very impressive in the AHL, probably should have more points uh, than he does at this point, but uh, a lot of uh, the guys on the Moose are... You know, kind of missing the missing the net on some of the plays he's setting them up on. There's been a few of those this season, uh, but he's been very good in the AHL. Uh, again, feel bad for the guy because he had a spot on the Jets this year. Finally seemed like he was going to crack the lineup full time and just wasn't able to uh, with his injury. So obviously it sucks, but with Brendan Dillon and Dylan DeMello in contract talks, there seems like there's going to be a defenseman spot open if Winnipeg doesn't sign a free agent or, you know, no one else steps up to grab it. I think that Hanola is, you know, a shoe in to be taking that spot. I hope that he's not disgruntled and, you know, wants to leave or anything like that because he's going to be a real good NHL player, at least a really steady, fun offensive defenseman, great vision, and uh, I think he's got a bright future. We'll see if next year he's finally able to get his NHL shot. But that's going to do it for me, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, just wanted to look at some of the future guys for Winnipeg. We've been so concentrated on the current team. I just wanted to look into the future of what the Jets have and, you know, some of their fun prospects, uh, you know, that we could see in the next one to two to three seasons. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's going to do it for me. Leave a comment down below what you guys think about the video, about these prospects, and uh, some of your takes on them. Who did I miss? Uh, definitely let me know down below. Uh, yeah, but leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Go Jets, go. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.